Hello, this is Eric Bobro. In this ArchiCAD video tutorial, I'll show you how to use backdrop photos to set your building into context on the site. Here we have a project supplied by one of our clients, Steve Nickel, of the Portfolio Group in Colorado. And you can see two main buildings on a hilly site. Now, most of you, I think, work like this, you create buildings, you put some basic site context around it, and it works pretty well to show your clients and to visualize for design purposes what your project will look like in that context. Now let's take a look inside the project here, and we'll see some beautiful design with some you know, nice material choices. Um, now there is something missing, and that is that this building is set up in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and we should be seeing some things through the window. Now Steve, with some help from me, put in a backdrop context. You can see it show up in this particular view and a little bit more prominently in some of these other ones here of the mountains. Now how was this done? This is not a simple background image. This is actually a backdrop and we can explore it a little bit further in this view where as we move forward into the space, you can see how it relates. As I turn my head, you know what we're getting. It looks pretty darn natural in terms of just what the space should have there. You're, you're looking through this. Not perfect, but definitely gives uh, a persuasive feel for how the space would be. Now, how is this done? we'll get a little bit of a clue when we jump outside and look at this particular view where we'll see this little blue thing poking out. And I select it and you can see that this element is actually a wall that's rather tall. It goes from minus 50 feet below the base level of the project up to 75. So it's 125 feet or about 12 stories in height. Now here's a view of the same, um, the same view with that turned off. It's a wall that's on a particular layer. Now in this particular view, if I sort of move up a bit here, you can see what we've got. This is just like what they do with movie sets where cameras inside the room and there's something some distance away that looks like it's the building across the street or the skyline, whatever. Sometimes they'll actually do it with movies so that they can see, you can see, you know, people walking or cars driving and, you know, lights and things like that. So how is this done? This is a wall and this wall here has a particular surface appearance. Since it's in ARCHICAD um, 18, uh, this is called the surface. In ARCHICAD 16 or earlier, these would be the materials for it. And so there's a particular one that he's defined called View of Continental Divide. Now let's see how we can create something like this. So we're going to draw something here. If I go back to the floor plan, you'll see that this actually is a curved wall right here on the plan. And there's two of them because he wanted to have a different photo in this side and a slightly different curvature for that particular view. Now, let me go and use the wall tool, which I've set up with a similar um, size going from minus 50 to 75. So just took that as a starting point. But I've set it up to be just a very simple general material. So this means it's just going to be a simple color. And I'll go and click to create you know, this backdrop here. And we'll go back to 3D. And we're going to see the new wall that I've created appear as just a simple you know, gray area. Now, how do we get it to have this picture? Well, let's go to the Options menu, Element Attributes, and define a new surface, or if you were in ARCHICAD 16 or before, it would be a new material. Now, this is one that we've got here that is used for this particular project. Here's another one, and you can see that there are two different pictures um, that Steve is using. Let's create a new one um, and show you how you can build this up from scratch. So I'll just pick one of the standard you know, uh, materials or surfaces and duplicate it. I'll create a new one here. Now, in ARCHICAD 18, you have some new options working from a catalog, but since I'm working from a picture image, I'm not going to be working from a catalog of predefined uh, backgrounds. Uh, but I'm going to give this a name of 
context view and I'm adding an asterisk here at the beginning so that it floats to the top of the alphabetical list. And I'll start out with it being just a duplicate of this simple surface. So you can see here now it's in the list right at the top. I like doing that for new surfaces that I create in a project because then all of the new ones, custom ones, are grouped at the beginning of the list. That's a nice little tip you might want to remember. Now, the texture is what is going to give us the um, appearance. Now, I'm working with the internal engine here as opposed to OpenGL or CineRender or Lightworks. This is the best way to create these um, for your project. And then you, there are other ways to copy them into either Lightworks or CineRender. Now, let's just see how this works. I'm going to click on Search. And I can load a picture from any file on my computer or I can look within the libraries that I've got loaded and since I already know this particular continental divide image is in my library I can grab it there but it would be the same as loading it from my hard drive. Once I've loaded it you can see a little preview here and it has a certain size. Now this size 3 foot 3 and 3 eighths that's 1 meter is indicating that this picture is going to show up on this particular preview uh, sphere as if it was just a few feet high. Now it isn't, we aren't deciding how big it is across and like how many miles or kilometers the mountains are. It's how big it is across on this particular surface that we're placing it. Now I want to keep the original proportion so I'll click on that. You can see how it adjusts slightly and I'll say well maybe I don't know 100 feet across. Let's just start with that. I'll take 100 feet across and that makes it 66 feet High. So about 30 meters across and 20 meters high roughly uh, for that. And we'll be adjusting some other settings in here later, but let's just see how that works. Now I've created this material or this surface, but I haven't applied it to this particular wall. So I'm going to go here and say, let's give it the context view as its appearance. Ah, okay. Well, we're seeing it. It looks a little bit odd. Uh, one thing is that the um, origin point for this is somewhere off in space. In other words, the um, uh, actually this is probably the zero level. Remember I have this down at minus 50 going up to 75. So I would like it to start down at the bottom there. So I, with the wall selected, I go to the design menu, align 3D texture, set origin, and go to the corner here. And you can see that as soon as I do that, it now updates. And here is one of the pictures, and then it repeats and repeats and repeats. Now if I delete this you'll see that the earlier version of this looks continuous. does not look like it's repeating. Well we're going to learn a little trick that you can use to make even a, a, a normal backdrop like this look better, look seamless. Well first thing we're going to do is just make it look t be taller because we certainly can't afford to have it start over um, here. We want to have the sky go up to that. So I'll go back to the definition for the surface and say that we want to make the height of it the 125, which would take it up to the top here. The width gets to be whatever it needs to be. Now I could make it taller than that and maybe have some of the sky go off the top, but let's just try the 125 and say OK. Now when I do that we don't see a change here because ARCHICAD doesn't think that I've changed the model. In order to force it to refresh, I could try to go to the View menu, Refresh, Rebuild, but it turns out that doesn't update the 3D window for this sort of thing. Uh, you can either move this around, stretch it, change it in some way so that Archicad thinks it has to rework it, or I like, in this case, just setting the origin back to the corner again, so that actually forces it in the same way without moving the element. So now we're seeing this looks much better in scale, but we're seeing a seam right here. So here's the trick. Go to the Options, Element Attribute Surfaces or Materials, and go and click on this button here to make the texture repeat with a mirror. So it's going to be like a kaleidoscope to some extent, and the left and right sides will be flipped. When I do this and refresh it, using that same setting the origin here, we'll see how it updates and now it looks fairly continuous. And while yes, you could say, hey, that tree is the same one here as here, still to your eye it looks pretty good, particularly if it's in the background and not the focus. Okay, now the color is different. When I deselect it, you can see how much darker it is. In order to get that improved, I'm going to go back to the definition of the surface and I'm going to go to the emission color. So emission is an option within ARCHICAD that's been around ever since the 
first renderings were done that allows you to simulate um, there being light from the other side. So I'll take this up to make it brighter. So I could tint it. I could actually give it a color. It's sort of like making a neon light behind the backdrop. I'll just say OK. You can see the preview changes here. And again, if I you know, select this and just force it to refresh the view by updating the origin again there, we'll see it get much brighter. Deselect it. So it's pretty close. It's not quite as bright. So we'll do one more tweak here to, to this and just change the, um, the admission up, say, to there and say OK. And then again, just tell it to refresh by setting the origin again back at this point. And once you've got it set up, of course, it'll remember and you know this, this will be useful um, for this project or perhaps for other projects with similar needs. Now this particular surface, I could go and make it straight. I mean, sometimes people will put one or more straight backdrops um, like this and it will look okay but it's a little bit more convincing in many cases to have this round. So I'll just put it back to the round configuration here. Now as you saw, there is a different uh, surface defined for this particular one. And of course, looking out the window here, that's more correct. Um, it fits in with the actual site context. Now there would be a, a problem with the seam here. And so that would require potentially some work in Photoshop to try to create a uh, you know more continuous panorama. And I'm not going to deal with that in this tutorial, but that is something that you might need to do. Now if you do take real photos from your site, if you go on a site and take a series of images, there are tools in, you know for iPhones and for Android devices that'll stitch them together into something that looks like one continuous image. And in fact, that would give you probably the most realistic representation uh, using something like that. Okay, so I want to show you how this looks in context. So I'll go back to the, um, let's say, the, the interior view that I had. And uh, you can see this is now looking at that particular new wall. Now, I noticed that the mountains are a little bit lower than I'd like. I think they should be more prominent. Probably they come up a little higher because we're not, maybe we're the same level as them rather than being above them. Well, in order to adjust that, I'd want to um, either reset the origin of that um, of that image or move the wall up. And the only way to really see how it would look is to do it from this context. Yet, if I try to select the wall, I'm actually selecting the window because there's a surface in the way. So here's a little trick you can try. You can go to the View menu, Elements in 3D View, Filter and Cut Elements in 3D, and you can then go turn off, for example, Doors and Windows. This allows you to turn off categories or only work on certain stories. There's all sorts of options here, but I'll just turn off doors and windows. You'll see within a second, the doors and windows disappear, leaving the holes. Now I can go select and you can see here, I've got that wall that I created that is using that particular um, surface that I did. Here's that you know context view. So this is the new one. Now in order to make it uh, uh, adjust a little bit, I'm just gonna simply take this up a little bit, the base. 10 feet, make it minus 40, and hit enter. Watch, and you see how it popped up right there. And still, the context line, the bottom of the wall, was still below my viewing plane. So, of course, you may have to compromise a little bit depending upon you know multiple different views and different angles, but that's a way that you can easily adjust it in context of the view that you're using it for. And we would put this on a layer that we uh, might hide sometimes and show at others. Possibly you could even have different versions on different layers, maybe for different times of day or night, or some other conditions, maybe spring or fall, things like that. Now, If I go back to the save view here for the dining and hearth room, it's going to restore the picture, the, the doors and windows, because that all views retain their information, including if it's a 3D view, the settings for the image, such as the filter elements that I just had. So, hope you found this video enjoyable and inspirational and now have the tools that you can use to create a backdrop photo or series of images to set your project into context. This has been Eric Bobro. Please add comments and questions and likes on the page that this video is posted. 
I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.